Welcome to Kitchen to Kitchen. I'm Nicole. And I'm Jamie. Um, today we're actually making a recipe called Momo's Pasta. This recipe comes from um, another crazy aspect of my life. Um, I have, besides Nicole and her other sister, on my opposite side, I have another sister who my mom gave up for adoption at a very young age, and she got in contact with my mom when I was about 19. Anyway, um, long story short, the first time that she met her in person, she taught her this recipe. So this comes from my sister Sabrina out in California. Um, and it has since become like one of my favorites. And I actually had a friend request that we make it on her channel here. So here we are, I'm teaching Nicole. Now I'm gonna make it the normal right way and you are gonna use a vegan cheese, right? right. Yeah, and then we also are going to venture to make our own noodles, which I have never done. And this recipe is from the, what is it, the Roaring Spork? Am I saying that right? That's the Roaring Spork. Okay. And I actually made noodles with an egg replacer in them. So this will be a new experience for me as well. Yeah, because it's eggless. So we actually are going to be starting by making aquafaba, which I had never heard of before. Nicole had, I hadn't, so I'm Googling it. Lo and behold, it's just the juice from the chickpeas reduced, so easy, maybe. Right, and so, and so actually what we're doing with the aquafaba, it already is aquafaba, that's just the liquid from the beans. What we're gonna do is reduce it down gotcha. based on what the recipe says to do. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to turn my burner on. Yep. She already has hers in her pan. I just put mine in a bowl here. And it's about the cup. It gives almost a cup from the can. That's how much I got. I measured oh, okay. it. I was curious. I, was, I got it from a little over one can. It took me just, I, I think I got, I needed like maybe a tablespoon from the second can to be able to make three quarters of a cup. Okay, mine was just about three quarters, I think. It was just under a cup, so I'm guessing it was just over three quarters. So yours might actually reduce faster than mine does. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see. So I'm gonna probably do mine. What are you doing yours at? Like at, you're doing yours pretty low. I'm, I'm starting at five. I'm oh. just starting midway. Oh, you are? Yeah, I well, want then. to bring it to just a, a light boil and then let it kind of simmer. My, my induction oven is making some really weird noises. It's like, Differently than before? I don't know, maybe. It's okay, we'll see how it goes. We have two cups or 240 grams of flour. My, the aquafaba is already boiling. Mine is steamy. A little bit. The flour and then a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. Oh, I have to make sure I don't put that into the pot. No, don't do that. Right. <laughs> and then half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using a pink Himalayan salt that I'm apparently throwing on the counter as well. <laughs> and then this recipe uses, I think it's a third. Let me make sure. No, actually an eighth. Sorry, that scared me. I looked and my mitt is like bubbly and I'm like, whoa, it scared me. Sorry, that was a really big overreaction. Well, hey, it's it's a different burner. Um, okay, oh. so the other ingredient that we're using to replace egg, it's not so much to replace egg, it replaces the egg's kind of flavor. And if you smell it. It smells like sulfur. Yeah. I went to the little Indian market by in Apple Valley by my house and I opened it this morning and I go, oh yeah, black salt, that smells like sulfur. I was like, whoa, stinky. It's called, so this is called uh, black salt. It's also called uh, Kala Namak. And it's, um, I have a recipe that I make sometimes as a, kind of almost like an egg replacement for something like omelets or scrambled eggs. Okay. And it uses um, mung beans, but it also uses the color namak to kind of, you know, give it that eggy flavor. Yep. 
Well, I'm I'm curious about it because I had to research how to get the black salt. I found it though. Went to after school last night. <laughs> yeah, I have about two more tablespoons to go. How do you know that? You're just guessing. Well, I, just poured it, I just poured it into the third cup measure. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm not that magic. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely reducing, though. I have about, I have a very small amount to go. Mine actually, oh. let me see, if I pour all that in there. Mine is actually right at a third cup. Okay. Yep, look at that, right there. Nice. So I'm going to just pour it in there. Oh. So it took you, it took you nine minutes, right about nine minutes, to reduce it from three quarters of a cup to a third. Yes. And then um, mine's obviously taking a little longer. But you had a little more liquid. You're right. Yes, I did. I wonder if it makes much of a difference flavor-wise. That's, huh. We won't really know. I bet it does, though. It concentrates it, right? According right. to my chemistry class that I'm taking, it would be extracting the water vapor and leaving the chickpea residue, right? Chickpea residue. Well, I went actually slightly under, so this is going to be interesting to see how it works. Got mine in my ice bath. Ooh, it's cooling off really fast. Yep. Ooh, that that tastes actually really tastes good. I just dipped my finger in there and tried it. I've noticed when I am using flour, if I use liquid that is too warm still, it really changes the end result of the whatever I'm cooking. Okay. Or sometimes even baking. Um but I, I think it's really close. Oh yeah, it's quite close. And yours has actually been in the ice water longer than mine has, so. Yeah, mine's pretty, I mean, it's still a little warm, but, and I filled mine up with more water after I, I realized that I didn't have enough water in there. It wasn't really touching, so it wasn't really doing anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I also had my bowls a little more narrow, I guess. So it's not yeah. really taller, a little more tall and narrow. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this point, I, it's just about ready. I'm going to take my flour blend and put it onto the counter. Yep. Okay. Here I go. <laughs> I'm following you, girl. Again, it's been a little bit since I've done this, so hopefully you're following the right person because it's, it's been never since I've done this, so... So I just put it right on there? Yep, put it right on the counter. Okay. And then I'm just going to wipe this bowl off. Okay, got my flour. And then with the flour, you're just going to create a well. Okay. This is a baking pasta is very tactile. I, I used to love making it. So we're just creating an area where the liquid can go into, but it doesn't um, Spill all touch. Over. Earth. Right, that too. Okay. 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 I think I got a well. Okay. And then we're gonna put in. I'm kind of scared. The, Not gonna lie. The, we're, we're gonna put in the aquafaba. I actually have a, a skin from a chickpea. I'm realizing. Oh, look at that. Okay. Cute little chickpea. Yeah. <laughs> Where's all the chickpea okay. juice? Concentrate. Yep. All right. So Here pretty. Goes nothing. Don't forget, though, we also have, oh, yeah, that goes in, and then the uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. Yeah, got that. I'm so scared. I don't know why. It's just, I mean, we're just going to mix it with our hands. It's just a new experience, you know? Yep. 
All right. Oh, look at that. It looks like a little well. So then I got to put my olive oil in. Yep. Okay. Do two tablespoons. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is going to be fun. It is. And who knows how it's going to turn out. It's just, we'll see. It looks like a little volcano sort of. You it does. Much, mine looks much smaller. Like I feel like I made mine taller and you like spread yours out. Well, the idea is, okay, the idea with the types of pasta that we made before, so we'll see how this works. We're just really going to kind of start pulling it, the, the flour in. Okay. Over okay. the wet. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, no. Do you see my wet ingredients are going all over the counter? Oh, uh, hello. Yeah, mine are too. So I'm just using my uh, spatula now. But regardless, I'm just going to kind of pull together with my fingers. Okay, I have to say, um, I can really smell that black salt. Yep, I can too. I was just thinking about that. I think that working with this salt it actually to me smells more like egg than egg smells like egg it smells like hard-boiled eggs it smells exactly like hard-boiled eggs yeah and i'm glad that i i'm glad i went and found it because i was just gonna use a pink himalayan salt until you said the thing about it actually like tasting like egg and i was like yeah oh, well then maybe no maybe i need to venture out of my norm so it's to you can use a, you can use a spatula whatever you want to get the all of this kind of off of the counter because it's all part of the pasta so at this point what we're going to do is a tablespoon at a time i have some water here and i'm just gonna kind of sprinkle it okay. over this mixture because we're trying to form a stiff dough and you, you just, you need the water in okay. to it. Mine is definitely going to need Mine's another. Gonna need some water for sure. Yep. So I just sprinkle it over the top. Yep. Knead away. Yep. This is not the right sweater for making <laughs> pasta, but I'll make <laughs> You will make do. Isn't it pretty though? And because of the turmeric, we're getting that yellow color that pasta, you know, the egg noodles usually have. Yep. All right. So yeah. I, think I got a good ball. It's not falling apart anymore. Okay. I probably used a good like three and a half tablespoons of water though. Really? Yeah. But it feels good. I mean, it feels like it's like pliable now. Okay. You know? Yeah. I used two tablespoons and that seems to have been enough. Is yours really stiff? I mean, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to make this into a bowl. Okay. And then I, I'm going to put it into a bowl, cover it and put it in the fridge for about an hour. So the next step we're gonna do is we are gonna actually marinate our ingredients minus the pasta. Um, and then we'll let that sit. Sometimes I, if I think about it, if I'm making it like the day after, I'll let it sit even overnight. So, cause it oh. just kind of mingle, you know, meshes all those flavors together. Um, but we're gonna start, so I am using Fontina cheese. And what are you using again? I'm using uh, the smoked provolone from Violife. Okay. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how it's going to taste with that. So yours are in strips, so you're just cutting, right, into small pieces? Yeah, I think you're, I'm cutting like this, and then I think I'll cut them maybe by thirds. Okay. You just want, basically the idea is that it's going to melt, um, you know, eventually into your pasta. So I'm shredding. Yeah, we'll see. I... Vegan cheese is not, or vegan plant-based, whatever you want to call it, cheese is not the same as... <laughs> I know. I know it is. Regularly by a long shot. And I would I would be really curious, actually, to see what yours tastes like. If I lived closer to you, I would, I would sample it. Maybe someday I can take a trip out there and we can cook together on camera. That would be really fun. 
Yes, and I would love to make this dish again so that um, we could we could try it both ways. I know based on the flavor of the cheese that it's going to taste really good. I just don't know. It's not going to have the same mouth good, mouth feel as yours will. Right. And I will say to be very honest and very fair, when I make this, I kind of guesstimate all the ingredients. So it's not exactly an exact science, but I'll still write down kind of about what I use. I typically use like a box pasta or like a big bag of like egg noodles. Um, so if we make the mixture and it just, the pasta is just, there's not that much. We'll scale down. We just won't add as much. It's not a huge deal. Okay. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to um, basically, I don't quarter them. I pretty much eighth, like an eighth of the tomato, but you want to take all the seeds out first. So we're going to take the, you know, cut the top off here. And then I typically half it. How do you do this? Do you take, do you de seed tomatoes often? Sometimes it depends on what I'm making. Okay. You cut the top. I didn't. I mean. I mean, if you have a better way to do this, I typically just go like the messy route. So I kind of cut it and then I just take the seeds out, kind of take that middle core out. And did you say? Did you say you cut them into eighths before you start taking the seeds out? No, I typically cut them either in half and then after okay. I take all the seeds out, then I cut them into eighths because you kind of just want like just the outside of the tomato. You don't want all those okay. messy seeds. And then you're gonna put them right in with your cheese. Okay, so next, um, basil, you need basil. So I've already kind of stacked my basil and rolled it so that I can slice up, slice her up there. And for these, you know, just like ribbons and then maybe after you kind of cut the ribbons, go in and kind of just roughly Chop them into slightly smaller pieces. Okay. I mean, if you just think you're just going to put it, we're putting all of this stuff into the cheese because we just want to let all those flavors just kind of marinate. Is this enough or would it be more? No, it's probably good. Okay. That's probably about what I have. I just, I want to dive into this bowl. It Can smells, I just dive in here? It smells good, doesn't it? And then for the oregano, um, you know, here we're doing like three stems or so. My oregano apparently was like a short little oregano because I just got like the tops of them. <laughs> but that's fine. And then I would say just kind of mince it, you know, roughly chop. And if uh, for people who do make their own uh, vegetable broths, you can just take the stems, you know, because they're woody and we can't use them in this dish, but you can take the stems and put them in the freezer along with all other, you know, ends of vegetables that you want to use for broth. And then you already have the herb that you need. See, I didn't know that either. I'm learning all these things from cooking with you here, Nicole. I really am. Like now I know I gotta take my garlic and smash it, but with the other hand, probably not the hand. I got. I just held the blade. I was gonna smash the handle. Woo, Jamie. On uh, things not to do. On things not to do today, with Jamie and Nicole. Oh my Why gosh. Hold the sharp knife by the blade and smash the handle. It's probably not a great idea. Oh my word. Okay, so I think maybe I'll do just a tiny bit more. I don't want too much. I, I don't want to imbalance it, but yeah, like okay. I said, it's kind of for me, it's kind of a wingy thing, you know? Right. And you can't really go wrong with it. I mean, you could probably put like way too much lemon or way too much salt, but everything that's in there now. The yeah. oregano, do do I want to make sure a leaves are at least maybe in quarters or does it matter? I don't think it really matters. I would say just okay. chop it, roughly chop it. Roughly chop. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Then should we do a garlic? Let's do our garlic. Yeah. So we're both just doing a big clove. And mince it. You can also um, use like a garlic smash, garlic press. I do that sometimes too but this will make it a little finer. Oh, right, so let me go. 
I was not thinking I was going to put it in a little bit larger, but it makes sense. I would do it smaller, probably. Yeah, I would yeah. do more of a more of a mince, a fine mince, just because otherwise you're going to have a straight chunk of garlic when you're eating, which is fine. But you know, if you really like your garlic. I'm going across it with the blade to almost kind of smash it like a press would. Okay. And then running the knife through again. Oh, yeah, that's super. Okay. okay. Tim was just saying, we, we had a pizza one time um, at a place. We had, like, it was like a buffet, and there was a pizza they ordered, and um, they had whole cloves you hate it. and I love garlic I mean don't don't get me wrong I love myself some garlic but whole cloves all over this pizza I don't even think they were really roasted I think they were just on there and baked it was way too much garlic. Wow. Well, you thought it was the onion yeah yeah I didn't know what it was at first and then I took a bite and I was like oh my gosh that's like a whole clove of garlic and they were everywhere like cheese yeah. wow very weird very, very odd. So then we're going to do lemon. So we're just going to squeeze our lemon. So I will probably do, I kind of guesstimate my lemon, but I like lemon. So I'll probably honestly do the whole lemon squeezed in. But, I am too. And that also adds some of the juice. So. Right, right. And then okay. last two things you're gonna need. You're gonna need, I'm using olive oil. You are not using olive oil because you wanna hold back a little bit of your oil consumption. So I'm using, it still does have oil. I, I used um, no chicken bouillon and kind of reduced it. Maybe not as much as I would have liked, but I'm just gonna see how this goes. And I'm gonna watch how much you put in. So I guesstimate. Yeah. Um, so really, I just kind of put it on, not a ton. I mean, I'm probably right now, I would say a couple, my, it looks like I'm putting a lot more than I am. It doesn't come out. Right you have to, yeah. yeah. I'm probably putting a couple tablespoons, I bet, right there. Okay. It just kind of looks glazed over the top. You probably can't even really see. Oh, I did. I, what? well, see, you can't, I, probably can't even really see. You can't see. Yeah. But like okay. my, it just kind of looks like I've kind of covered the top, but it's not like soaking, you know, it's not okay. like it's like a pool of oil. Okay. And you can always add more oil, you know? Right. And I tend to do that. So if I, and then you're going to stir it up. Um, and then, you know, salt and pepper, that's one of those things also where I just kind of guesstimate. I give it a good couple shakes of salt and a good couple shakes of pepper. And then I stir it. So mine just kind of looks like you can tell the cheese is, well, I don't even know if you can see it, but when you look at your bowl, yeah, you can tell that it's moist. You know, it has a little bit of juice, but it's nothing crazy. It's not like sitting in a pool of oil. And then you're just gonna let that sit. What does it taste like? Oh, it's good. I just want to get a fork. I, I don't want to wait for pasta. <laughs> You just want to eat the cheese mixture right now. Yeah, I don't even need a fork. Can I just be like this and just start eating? I'm gonna add a tiny bit more oil to mine. I like my olive and why, oil just a little bit. So more. why did you decide to add more oil to it? Um, it just looked like it needed a little more wetness, moisture to mine. But like I said, if you add it, you can always add it to the pasta later. So if yours looks nice and kind of just like it's moist and everything's kind of, your cheese doesn't look dry. Oh, yeah, no, it definitely doesn't. And it looks in the bottom like there's probably about a third to a half a cup of liquid. Oh, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I typically, sometimes I will have like a little bit of oil pulled down there. I feel oh, like okay. I didn't use as much as I normally do. Okay. Maybe I'll add a little more, just so I can be like and you. Usually, sometimes I I will try it with oil, and maybe it would have been nice to. I I am curious how it turns out like this. 
because if it does, it makes it so that more people in our home can eat it. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. So this just sits. That's just how sit and marinate. And we are back with our dough balls. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna take this and cut it into four pieces, roughly equal size. I'm gonna knife out for this. I'm just Very gonna gentle. do it with my pizza cutter. Okay. Cause why not? Yeah. And with how small this dough is, maybe we could have done it in halves, but I think quarters is gonna be easier. And I'm just kind of smashing it a little bit in my hand. Is yours falling apart or is it? Um, it's pretty good. Not really. Not really. Do you have it? So do you have your pasta machine on the widest setting? Well, let's take a peeker. You've got to pull, you pull the knob out and turn it. User error here. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have I have it on the widest. Okay. So we're just going to take it and roll it through really slowly. Okay. I'm curious to see what comes out because this is feeling different, but, you know. Uh, mine is breaking apart. Oh, it is? Yes, it is. Okay, so mine did to a certain extent. See, <laughs> I'm going to try rolling it through again. See what I get here. Maybe I needed to flatten mine more. That's probably user okay. error. There we go. Mine is totally falling apart. Okay, well. Should I just roll it? I wonder, do you think mine is like, didn't have enough liquid in it? Well, I thought you actually put in a little bit more than I did. I did. I'm, gonna, I'm actually Maybe four. it has something to do with like, could it have literally have something to do with like climate? Cause I am in the middle of like, it's so cold here and so dry here right now. Yeah, I was just thinking that. And we have actually had quite a bit of rain lately. So we're already more humid, and that's quite possibly part of it. Right. Well, so okay. I okay. Okay, I ended up rolling mine out on four. It is not as smooth of a dough as I'm used to, um, but it'll definitely work. Maybe I should try it going through. Yes, there. I would try putting that through. We'll give it a shot. I'll give it a yeah. shot. Yeah. I'm gonna make it a little thinner though. Is that a good idea? Right. I don't know. Well, now that you're already thinner, I would definitely. Oh, it's it's going through now. Okay. I mean, now so you just started it. That's good. Interesting. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. All right. Look at me. Look at look at it. Yeah. Okay. Should now I, I took thinner than that, what maybe. Setting, what setting did you use? I don't even know. I just turned it. I don't. I don't like. I'm gonna go down even thinner because. Are there, are there no numbers on your knob? Oh, there are. I'm lying. I'm on three right now. I was probably so I, just on four. I took mine all the way down to five. Okay. I just, you know, you, you will have your own preference. I'm just saying what I did mine at, and I run it through twice on each setting. It's, just, it's a pretty dough. It's just not quite as smooth as I'm used to. Well, I'm certainly going to get a lot more noodles putting up through this pasta thing. I just have to obviously get it started. Yeah. Because once it's started, it's fine. Because now, I mean, look at that. Perfect. Maybe it's just a climate it could be you know it's minnesota it's dry here it kind of dries out i need to like oh you know i wasn't thinking about this we always when we're working with because it's been so long when we work with pasta we cover it with a towel i should have while done we're that. yeah do it right now i have a towel right now cover you up 
totally forgot. Okay. okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut them. Okay. I usually do it with a pasta or a pizza cutter, whatever works. Um, the idea with these noodles is to make them roughly one inch wide by five inches long. Okay. So um, I'm not, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see what happens, really. That's what I'm Let's doing. See. I'm just gonna kinda go to town. So we'll basically just twist them kind of like this. Okay. The idea is to twist and then lay it down okay. to air dry. These look a little wonky, but you know what? I don't really care. I'm probably not going to like take a photo and like show anyone my work, but hopefully they taste good. Some of these really do lose their twist once they get on the... They do, yeah. Like you'll twist them and you're like, oh, look at my perfect twist. And then you lay it down and it's just like, whoop. <laughs> oh, well. So these have to dry for about a half hour, you said? Yep. So we'll just set them off to the side. And then um, when actually when we come back, we will cook the pasta and then put the dish all together. I'm excited to eat this dish. Yeah, I am too. I just realized that, as I said, excited, I pounded my hand on the counter. I am really excited about this. <laughs> You're so excited for this dish. We are back. Uh, we have our water boiling for our noodles. Our noodles have sat for a half hour. Is that how long yes, that for? Yes, okay. about. Um, for this recipe, I like to add a little bit of, probably like a half a lemon to the water just before you cook the noodles. Okay. Oops. Just for flavor. I've never tried adding lemon to noodles, so I'm really curious about this. Yeah, it's sometimes I actually honestly forget to do it, and it's still good, but I remember today, then, so. How much salt do you generally add? I kind of add quite a bit of salt, but that's okay. because I'm just, I like my noodles. I watch my cooking shows, and they're always like, make the water salty you know so it's kind of what I tried to do so then we can yeah. go ahead and put our noodles in the moment of truth the moment, moment. of truth for our noodles these are they're so pretty homemade. I, I rolled these out myself Nolan Nolan's looking at me like what are you doing <laughs> Does your water come back up to a boil yet? Yes. Okay, yeah, mine has too. So we're gonna try cooking these for about three minutes and then test them and see if they need a little bit longer. Okay. Mine are, what I'm really happy about is they're not sticking together. Mine aren't either. Oh, there is just something about making a food just, you know, that from scratch, but yeah, making it from the ground up and it, there's a different flavor. And I really do think that, I think it, can, it nourishes the body differently when there's our own, uh, some of our own effort put into it, but also just, I really think love is a big thing in food. Right. So this, this to me is love. And when this all comes together, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. I think they taste pretty dumb. You think so? I think so. How long has it been? It's been just about three minutes. Try one. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> mm. Mine might be a little thicker than yours. Yeah. I'm going to give it probably another two minutes. Okay. I'm going to take mine off, good. I think. I think mine are done. Because yeah. I'm, like I said, I don't like my pasta soggy. Right, yeah. I'm so proud of myself. It's my own noodles. I know. This is exciting. It is exciting. I can really smell the lemon. Now, I could not taste the lemon. I'm just realizing. I wonder. I can't taste it either. Really. Well, should I? Maybe kind of. Half? 
I kind of can. You can do more. Okay. You can do more if you want to. Maybe I'll add in the other half and just see, although it is almost done cooking. Okay. So then we want to turn this down or off? Um, I would probably put it on low. I would drain, strain okay. your noodles. And then you're going to add your noodles back to your pot. And you're going to add all your cheese and your tomatoes to that. And you're just going to stir it all up. And like I said, mm -hmm. I mean, like if you feel like you have too much cheese or too much sauce, just kind of add it at your discretion. Like, you know, if you like it cheesier, I'm just adding everything in. Okay. And, well, I don't know about all of the liquid because maybe I had too much liquid, but. I added all my cheese. I added everything. Okay. Oh, and all the liquid? Well, I didn't have as much liquid as you, I don't think. I think you had a lot more liquid than I did. I probably only had a couple tablespoons. I wonder how that happened. I don't know. Okay. So the idea is you just kind of want the cheese to melt. I'm curious if your cheese is going to melt. It really smells amazing. Yeah, it's very, I love it personally. Like I said, this is my first time though, experimenting with the cheese or the noodles. So this will be different, but. Right. Hopefully a an awesome different. Yeah, right? She was melting at all? A little bit, but I'm wondering if it's, it's kind of like it's breaking down, if that makes any sense, more than melting. Okay. So I think I'm probably going to try it at this point. Just give it a shot, see what it tastes like. Let's see. Is it good? I love the lemon in here. It really stands out. Yeah. Yep, yeah, the lemon is really good. Wow. Sometimes I even put like more lemon in, depending on how lemony I'm feeling. I think the amount of lemon that I have in here, it is so bright that it's probably maybe more than you usually put. I don't know. It's really good. Good. Mm. And I really like the noodles. The noodles are good. Yeah. I think I would be curious to try like the plant-based version of egg noodles that you can buy at the store. Right. Just to see right. how it would be because I know they'd be a lot thinner. Right. But I think this is really delicious. Good. Mm. Go from All right. To, uh, oh my gosh. Um, no. oh. Really good. Yeah, good. All right, cool. Okay. Well, okay. Thanks for watching us. Mm hmm Yep. And um, I hope you try it. It's really good. See you next time. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>